<laughs> the Visiting Artist Program, funded by PATHA's graduate program, brings an outstanding roster of local, national, and international artists to, the, to PATHA each semester for lectures, critiques, and workshops. The program exposes students and the public to a range of artistic approaches and fosters discussion about contemporary art and ideas. This afternoon, we are pleased to have Maria Guzman Capron joining us. Maria Guzman Capron lives and works in Oakland, California. She received an MFA from California College of the Arts in 2015 and her BFA from the University of Houston in 2004. Some recent exhibitions include Snail Shell, Being Human is Hard, both at Point Two Gallery in Los Angeles, Female Trouble Two at Cult, Amy Freiberg exhibitions in San Francisco, Body Spray at Buffalo Institute for Contemporary Art in Buffalo, New York, Don't Eat Me at Delhi Gallery in Brooklyn, New York City, and Through Her Eye at Mana Contemporary in Chicago, Illinois. She is a co-founder and past member of Control Shift Collective, an exhibition space and 13 studios located in West Oakland and operating with an emphasis on collaborating with underrepresented arts communities, including artists of color and queer and non-binary artists. She also works as a full-time mother and part-time facilitator at NIAD Art Center, a progressive art studio helping more than 60 artists with disabilities create art. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Maria Guzman Capron. And thank you for welcoming us into your studio. You may now begin sharing your screen. Hello, uh, just saying thank you for having me. I'm very happy to be here with you today. And um, I just, uh, first of all, I wanted to say my pronouns are she, her, they, them. And um, I'm going to be showing you a lot of artwork, talking to you about my art practice and just um, materials and processes that are involved uh, in it. So with that, I'm going to share a screen. And here we go. So uh, good morning. I'm starting with an image here of uh, my studio about a year ago. And um, I, I chose this image to start because it gives you, I think, a good introduction of my art practice, of the kind of works that I, that I make. Um, the work that I have in the studio now is very different or somewhat different, but, um, but this is a point in time that gives you a good uh, variety. So as you can see, I have uh, pieces that are hanging on the wall and they're sort of two dimensional, but they still have some thickness and some parts are uh, maybe a little bit like bulging or a little bit thicker. Um, there are sculptural works, there are three-dimensional. Um, and then on the far right, um, there are some drawings as well. Um, so, you know, this is kind of my art practice as an overview. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how I got here. Um, so for undergrad, as my uh, bio said, I went to the University of Houston with a, and I got a painting uh, degree. Um, but in it is where I started working with fabric. And that's the main material that you see in this works here. Um, there's a lot of fabric, there's a painting as well. But um, my attraction to this material started back then. And um, I didn't really have a background in sewing or know how to work with uh, fabric. So I started by cutting shapes out of cardboard and plywood and uh, hog gluing the fabric to it. Um, and so this is just to say how much the, my art practice has, has been developing but is born out of a desire of using a material that I didn't know how to use, uh, that I didn't really have any experience for, but that that was part of like what propelled a lot of this work. It's the exciting part of, uh, of figuring out a process that worked for me. 
And uh, it's something that has happened, you know, one piece leading another piece is happened through time. And so a lot of it is not, what I do is not just produce objects um, like the wall hangings or the sculptural work, but I'm also creating a process, a way of making uh, a craft that feels personal, that feels um, my own. So because of that, I'm starting to, uh, I'm gonna go back in time a little bit. And um, I went to grad school at CCA and that's where I really, I think I found a focus for, um, for working with uh, fabric and this material. Uh, I've tried many things, uh, like I have soft sculpture, uh, some more uh, kind of installation work, uh, costumes, masks, um, alter egos, they could use a different clothing wardrobe. Um, all ways of trying to answer the question, how do I work with, with fabric, a material that I felt a strong attraction for. So as I said, uh, in grad school, I kind of find a focus and a way of working with it. Uh, they started to feel uh, more comfortable and, and exciting, um, kind of like really picking up a thread of, of something big at the other end. Um, this piece is from right after grad school at an exhibition at City Limits in Oakland. Um, and it's, it's, I think, a good building block for other works that I will show you later. It's, um, it's a wall hanging, what I started calling wall hanging. Uh, it's made out of fabric. Um, it's quilted in some way. So it's reminiscent of things that you have around your home, like uh, blankets. Um, so it has two layers, a back, a front, and in the middle sandwich, there is batting, cotton, um, acrylic stuffing. And, uh, and then it's stitched with a machine, with a sewing machine, uh, straight stitch, most of it. And, um, and there are different kind of uh, patterns, um, materials that are kind of collaged together then. Um, in this one, you can see also that the figure is starting to appear. That's something that also developed over time uh, and it started in grad school. Um, so there's not, it's not very apparent, there's not a face, but there is a body. There are legs, um, she has a little heart tattoo that is embroidered on her. Um, and, um, and there is painting as well. So this is a way also that I bring all the patterns together is that the painting allows me to bring in or highlight different parts of the of the patterns or add color. Uh, and I feel like all of this helps me uh, unify all these disparate parts. Uh, this is another, I think, example of that. This is uh, un limon medio bonbon. Um, and titling, I think for me, it's kind of a funny thing. It just happens towards the end of the piece. Uh, most of the work is very um, uh, intuitive. And, um, and, and so at the end, I feel like I'm looking at what has happened. And then uh, titles like Un Limon Medio Monbon, a lot of times include Spanish words. I am Colombian, Peruvian, and um, that is the language that I speak with my family members, and there is a certain comfort to it. Um, and I feel like it's, it just, I like how it sounds a lot of times. There are, I title things in English as well, but a lot of them are titled in Spanish. Um, so in this piece, I think it's a good example of what I was talking about, of piecing things together. A lot of times, and my process changes all the time too, but uh, a lot of times I start by uh, purchasing uh, pieces of fabric, uh, either at thrift stores, discount fabric stores, um, reusable material stores. 
Um, and I find these kind of patterns that to that, that call out uh, in some way, that they, they, they feel like attractive and then they, I kind of start matching them as I purchase them um, in some way, kind of as you would uh, try to create an outfit maybe in the morning, you know, you're like, oh, does this skirt goes with this shirt, you know? Um, the same way, it's like, does this, this is this making this uh, chemistry, this excitement, like uh, within me? Um, so then I bring everything to studio, I lay it on the ground, start cutting, and and this speaks about a process in which I think I, I try to let go of uh, the more rational side of of that we all are engaged in all the time. Uh, and, um, and have more of a, a sensory response to the materials that I'm using. Allowing the, I think the memories that are embedded just within our bodies um, to just come out and have a direct reaction to the materials. So I cut pieces and then I start seeing characters uh, things start to like, in some way, just show up and emerge. And, uh, and so this is kind of, this kind of work is, I think feels very much that way as, a, as this character is emerging out of the materials. Um, as I showed you at the beginning, a lot of the work, I think it's kind of like going it kind of balances between two branches of kind of making, two main branches. There's, there are other things, but uh, some work that is hanging on the walls and some that is more sculptural. Um, and this is another, I think, exciting thing for me because it's another way of investigating this material, um, of figuring out how I can, and this is a more direct, answer, how can I give a body, uh, a structure to a material that is very fluid and very like flaccid, you know, it doesn't have anything um, that can give structure itself on, on its own. Um, so this work is done very differently. And um, every time, and it keeps changing. I think it changes a lot more than the wall hangings. Uh, for this one, I started by using foam pieces um, that then were covered with pieces of fabric and then hand stitched around the shapes that I had cut out. Then um, attached to a piece of plywood and, which allows it to really stand, right? Um, and this gives then a, a kind of solution to the formal questions of how, um, how do I make this figure out of this material? But then as we can see, a lot of the content is starting to uh, come together as well. I think it's like a parallel, they travel together and the figure is coming in more and more and it has starting to have more of a confident presence. Um, and, uh, and it's asking what in some way, what is it for me? The question is, what is it that we can be? Um, and um, is, uh, I think it has femme qualities and then, um, but it's wanting to be more than that. Is for example, with this piece, this piece called El Tigre y Yo is, is, is questioning, can we be also a bit animal? Can we, can we engage in being wild? Can um, I think felines also have been sometimes associated with femininity? And so, but what kind of feline then I'm asking? And so it maybe it's like a tiger and it's ferocious. It can be ferocious. And this sculpture is a tiny little piece um, and it's posing exposed a bit in the back showing her little tanga uh, that has tiny little plastic beads sewn to it. Um, so the works are um, have their own narratives in some way. 
figures, characters are starting to be, for me, uh, much more, um, I think, uh, to, to have a strong presence. And they're part of stories. There are small events that are happening, right? They're like, you're catching these characters at a specific moment, but something maybe has happened right before it and something will happen right after you see them. Uh, this is superlativa. Uh, and I feel like it is really trying to capture a body in movement. Um, she has a, a f like two faces and I think it's like, I'm trying to convey time, like a second before, a microsecond before as she's looking back and then as she's escaping forward, um, maybe out of this textile landscape that she's part of that is enveloping her. And, um, and she's holding a banana and she has a bag. So she has accessories. She's ready for anything. And, um, and, uh, and she's superlativa. She's extra. She's super, right? She has powers that maybe um, us, just a regular us, don't have. So I showed you some just in, like work, some pieces that I feel like um, give you a bit of an overview of the kind of work that I make and how it, it's been developing. But there's also, there are also have been some exhibitions that have been um, also key like moments in some way in my art practice. And um, this is a uh, desdoble, a solo exhibition I had at uh, RSF in San Francisco. And uh, it really allowed me to uh, see all that was going on, the, the textile wall hangings, the sculptures, and to play with the space uh, to see what, the, what conversations were happening. Um, the title of the piece is Desdoble, to means unfold, right? And so I, I always picture in some ways, like, you know, we're always working in our studio and like tight spaces, putting one, making one thing, putting it away, making one thing, putting it away. And it's instead, it's like, okay, let's, let's open up now. Let's, um, let's see what's going on because even, you know, even if you're the one making it, sometimes you, it's hard to see all those connections. Um, so it was, it was really fun. And um, I, uh, well, let me back up real quick. As you can see on the left image, there are, there is a rug. That is the way you come in into the space. Um, so that's the introduction uh, to the, all the objects within it. And on the, on the right, there is a detail of the, of the rug and a sculpture and a drawing and a stool that are on it. And this is the piece. And like I was saying, this is, I think, a great chance to work with space and how you can view an, uh, an artwork and the different perspectives that can, you can have. Uh, as you come in, you see it sort of like squished, flat, and upside down. Maybe you're more aware of the texture of the rug. But then when you go to the second story, you get to see, like, face it as, you know, um, as you're making eye contact with this uh, domestic, recalling like a domestic rug. Um, but I, what, what, I, what I enjoyed about this process as well is that I, I was trying to figure out if then you can, you can see yourself, the viewer, in a different way, right? When we're looking at our work, we're often engaging in this way in which our eyes are seeing the pieces, right? And so we disappear from the, from the view. Our bodies are not there. And, um, but when you're looking down on a, on a rug, the perspective is different. And then all of a sudden our bodies are in the peripheral vision of whatever we're looking at. 
And so it, I think it makes you aware of your own materiality, right? Maybe in comparison to the work that you're looking at. And then the question of, are we just viewers or are we participating in the work that we see? And I, that's what I'm also very interested in and why I've been attracted to uh, fabric and materials like this, that they have a lot of texture is that I think there is a connection, an immediate connection to our bodies. We wear fabric all the time, right? Uh, we have clothes. It's part of our domestic space. There are curtains, there are uh, tablecloths. Um, oh, I love tablecloths. And, um, and all of this, so we're familiar. We're familiar with this material, right? We have memories uh, of how it feels to touch things. And so I think there is a visual touch that we experience. Um, that we can, we can be like, oh, I think that part will feel rough or that part will feel soft. Um, this is another piece as part of the, that was part of this exhibition that I feel like also was important for me because, um, well, the title is Mothership. And um, I think it talked about my experience of being a parent of having, uh, I think, um, a another person within your own body. Uh, the crazy idea that like, when you really think about it, what, what that is. Um, and that in some ways, like, I think it makes you a little bit like the typical or like sci-fi kind of creature. Um, and so um, bringing in that element also as a, as, a, as a good thing, as a question of like, uh, I want these characters to be empowering. And that power comes from being more than just uh, maybe from, from here. Maybe we are uh, not just a little bit animal and wild, and, but maybe it's a little bit out of this world, um, a creature that we can really create, we can, we can imagine, and we can put any powers that we want within it. So I was, I was saying a lot of the work is about um, considering the body itself. And, and so this piece, it really is, it's called reflection. And I, I like the idea that it, it, it was bringing in like reflection as in thinking, like uh, taking that time, but also like the uh, reflection as uh, seeing yourself somewhere else, right? another another you um, and so um this is a, a piece that is looking down to its own private parts and and thinking about what is that when you see yourself within your most intimate and vulnerable self making that connection Um, so, uh, another exhibition that felt also that focused a lot of these conversations that are happening within the work uh, was the exhibition at Delhi Gallery. Uh, it was called uh, Don't Eat Me. And it's a, it was a duo exhibition with Asuka and Anas uh, Anastasia Ogawa. Um, and we came up with the title together in thinking about how much we as artists are exposing ourselves and in some way becoming vulnerable when we are showing the work, exhibiting the work and people then are gonna come in and see it. So it was almost this, um, this plea of like, don't eat me, be gentle, uh, uh, be, you know, don't consume, but maybe participate. Uh, uh, within with our work. Um, and so the pieces specifically, I felt like it was a very um, fitting title because all the work that I made for this exhibition was very small. 
right, was all about this size. And um, there were little creatures. There were, I feel like maybe bite size, you know, like you just take a bite. Um, so, but uh, what happened also, it was, I think it, it had a good sense of humor. Uh, and uh, which is something that is important, I think, for my our practice as well. Uh, humor allows us to be vulnerable in some way, to be open, to show laughter, which is a reaction that we can't really control. Um, and uh, and so these pieces live within that uh, realm. This is in Trepida, and. Um, she is, she has limbs that extend in ways that our bodies could never extend. She's tiny, so I always pictured her as something that would be scurrying around in a corner, in a corner, and then maybe the lights come on and then you see her and she's surprised. Maybe she's scared, maybe she's not, maybe she's just gonna leap out of your vision. Um, the sculpture itself, is made differently than the previous smaller sculptures that I showed you. This one has a, a wire structure um, that goes all within it. It's almost like a skeleton. And it was also a way of drawing it. And, and I can show you later in the slideshow, there are some in progress pictures that will show that. Um, the wire you can see in the foot, I like showing the, how everything is made. You know, there are really no secrets. Um, uh, the process is such a big part of the work that, that you can see it. If, if you were in person, you could get really up close and see all the tiny stitches there are between the little pieces of fabric. You can see that the top is knitted and the hair is just yarn. Uh, the hands also have yarn just wrapped around um, the wire that is making them. This is a selection of other pieces that were in the exhibition. Um, and just to show you the variety of the characters, um, really, I like to try to, to capture personality uh, and maybe an action, like the bottom right corner piece is called planta rodadora, which is like tumbleweed. And so it just really was about how beautiful that movement is and picturing myself within that movement and how it would be to let go in that way that you can engage and start rotating and, and let go and not knowing where you would end up. Um, the one on the left is called Is Solamente Tu, which comes from a song, a Spanish song that uh, I, my mom used to sing. And I felt like she had that personality of like uh, a performer. Uh, and the one on the top right is a little detail of uh, Eat Me, which was, I think, the opposite of what the exhibition title was calling for and a little, um, you know, flirty, flirtatious piece, inviting the viewer to, to participate. As I was saying, I was going to show you some pro in progress pictures and the one, the image on the top right corner uh, is Intrepida, the first small piece from Delhi gallery uh, that I showed you. So it really starts like a big fluff. There's the wire, the batting cotton goes all around it and kind of just stays together. Then I, the bottom right, I can show you that there is thread that wraps around uh, the body itself. And then I, the left image shows you how I pin everything together. And, um, and that's when I start hand stitching it until it tightens and tightens and tightens and it, it becomes, um, I don't know, the character, the person. So 
So a lot of working for me is, is thinking about also like things that would be exciting to make, right? And uh, uh, it really, it, it's, it's fun. If it's not fun, then I don't wanna do it. Uh, it has to be exciting. It has to be challenging in some way. Um, and, and so this was this idea of trying to create a vase out of, um, out of fabric. And, uh, you know, mostly vases made out of ceramic or clay. I was like, how it would be to have a piece that has an outside and an inside. And this sculpture is complete, all hand stitched. Um, and it was a bit complicated to get at the inside to be, have that, a vessel kind of uh, shape. But also I liked the idea the title of the piece is Peluda y Atrapada, which I just love how it sounds, but it means hairy and trapped, right? So, um, I don't know, I feel like that's something hairy that is trapped, it's kind of gross, but kind of because of that exciting, I don't know, you know, like I wanna know what it is. Um, and, um, and so the vessel itself, which is a container, right? Is uh, not only, it's not holding anything, like it's empty inside, right? But the vessel itself is, I feel, what is containing the, the atrapada y peluda, right? It has two faces. Uh, one which has a nose that protrudes and the other one that is more flat and more two-dimensional, more like the wall hangings kind of work. And uh, it speaks to, uh, I think, um, something that also is a recurring theme is uh, the idea of multiplicity within us and how, you know, we should allow that to be uh, just more expressed. And something that I haven't talked about uh, uh, that much yet is how drawing has become uh, such an important part of my art practice. And I don't see it as a, as a way to sketch a work really, um, but it, it is, a, it's a parallel. It's something that is also going along um, with, with the other ways of making that I have. Um, I always love drawing, but I feel like at some point I kind of forgot about it. I don't know if that can happen. <laughs> uh, and then it was during grad school that it just, I took this class that like just brought it all back and my excitement for it as well. And um, the way I work, like with, when I work with fabric is um, it's a process that takes time, right? So there, there are fast moments within it in which like I am piecing fabrics together and you know that kind of happens. Um, there is an immediacy to that, right? But then it's a lot of sewing, right? Which I enjoy, I really love uh, the craft of that, like the hand sewing and the machine sewing, they're satisfying different parts of me. But um, sometimes I feel like I have this, and, and it's, it's great. It's just to find the things that work for you, right, as an artist. I have this need to have a work that I can make maybe in just one hour, one sitting, right? That it has that immediacy all over it. And that you can just draw and then get, because I think a lot of the way I work is that there is there's buildup, there's a, there are things that I'm holding on to. And then it's that release and that pushing things into something else. Um, so for this two objects, I uh, made the drawing first and it had that release, that excitement. And then the sculpture, it wasn't that I was trying to make a sketch for a sculpture. The piece, the drawing itself is its own piece. And then I decided that I loved what it 
what it was talking about and that I wanted to also try to create it as a three-dimensional object just because I wanted to see them together also. I wanted to see the conversation that was happening between the two, between the, the gesture of, um, of drawing and the slow process of hand sewing a sculpture. Um, the piece is titled Aki, which means here. Um, the character is making eye contact with you, but it's a little bit empty that her eyes are not quite there, like her presence is not quite there. But I feel like that's where the hand, her own hand comes in and, and in some ways reassuring and affirming um, her presence. So I think this, some of these pieces, if you remember, were in that first studio shot that I showed you. Um, and uh, this is part of a big installation. It was just one wall for uh, John McNeil Studios. And, um, and I think it's, it's, it's a good moment because in it, within it, I, I really was thinking about how much um, the work is made out of all about, all from small pieces, right? So the fabric gets cut the, the, and applied and sewn together, right? But it's all smaller par parts, different fabrics, different shapes, all coming together to make something that is sort of unified, right? But this speaks of multiplicity. And so these pieces and the installation was very much about that. The title was Seniors Looks and it was creating a, a being that is living within this space, this wall that is separate, but also coming together with the lines and the drawing uh, within the wall and in which every part of its body in some way has an importance, right? The, the head is at the bottom, it's called cabeza, uh, foot, pie, and torso uh, is at the top. It's another shot of them a little bit closer. Um, uh, and the, yes, they're, they're fairly large. There's not quite a complete body, but they are uh, within it, multiple beings emerging. So then I'm bringing you a little bit closer last year um, and what we've been through, right? Uh, as, a, as a whole, as a whole country and uh, being on lockdown. I don't know how it's been for you, but it's, it's been such a, um, such a weird experience, challenging, full of everything, anxiety um, and all sorts of other. Um, but so what happened for me specifically is that I, at first when we went into, um, when we went to lockdown, uh, I started working from home only. I wasn't going to studio, right? And so that made me aware in, some, in so many ways, how much space, is um, affects what I make and what I do. Uh, I'm showing you this piece first, it's called Who's There, right? Which I think it really was trying to embody this kind of weirdo, I'm being alone for way too long kind of experience. I mean, I have a family, but still there's only like two people and they're always the same two people. Um, so of being like, who's there, you know, um, scared, anxious, but excited maybe. Um, and I was working, I was doing everything from the kitchen, which is where I am now. Um, and, and, but it really, I mean, I love the domestic space. It's always been a big influence of my work, but, uh, but it also felt a little bit like it was closing in on, on me. Um, so the work 
wasn't only I wasn't only making smaller work too like I just was concentrating on the sculptures but I was like all of a sudden I was like I think I need coasters and I think I need a curtain for my window and so I made all these other things they were um they were like things that have influenced my work, but then I was coming back and influencing my space, right? Um, the, the curtain is called Intruder, which I thought it was funny to have an image of a person coming in through your window, but so that people wouldn't see you also. Uh, and then I also made a mirror. Uh, I made a coffee table as well, um, not pictured, but, uh, and, I also made a ton of drawings because that's a, an easy thing to do at home, right? And so um, uh, again, a focus on that kind of immediacy. Um, these are more recent pieces, but they really were developed from all the drawings that were happening at home. This one is called, uh, I feel this energy this one, sometimes I feel so strong. And this one was just about the anxiety and the idea. A lot of the work was like feeling the, the closing in and in some way, like the idea of framing yourself, the figure is framed by its own body. And I feel then I went back to studio, which is super exciting. And so even though there are, we are living in very problematic um, times, very challenging times for many people, there was a joy that happened from being not just at home and from being able to work at a different scale and going back to um, the fabric work that. I couldn't do at home. Um, and so the, the works I think are showing some of that, some of that excitement. And also I was getting ready for the exhibition of part two that happened in November, which originally was scheduled for, um, for August, but because of everything that was happening, we had to push back all the way to November. Um, this piece is called Enlace, uh, which means link. Uh, and it was really trying to capture that, um, that in-betweenness, that trying to like, trying to handle everything that was happening uh, and with ourselves and, and, and make it work and support it. All that drawing that was happening also at home really has a strong influence in this kind of work now. I feel like the lines are much more prominent. There, there's a, I feel more confident in, in bringing this quality that is very like, um, that has a lot of gesture and that is very immediate. And there is, um, that has a lot of painting, painterly qualities. I'm, I'm able, I feel like I'm able to merge them more with the slowness of the craft of, of making this kind of work. I don't have all the pieces, but what happened the previous one and this one, um, I titled them all after a chant that uh, my family sings when we play games. It's called Alabim. Alabam, Alabim, Bombam. And then if you win, you know, and you're maybe in the team called Red, you will go Alabim, Alabam, Alabim, Bombam, Red, Red, Ra, Ra, you know, because you won. Uh, so it's fun. Uh, but anyways, these pieces are titled with that in mind. So one is Alabim, one is Alabam. And they were, I think I was trying to show they all came in some way like bursting out um, when I came back to studio and I was preparing for this exhibition. And I felt like they really were embodying a rhythm in some way. Um, this one specifically, I was thinking about uh, dancing and uh, 
the way we move when we engage and we follow a rhythm and how much that process allow us to let go of our conscious self and engage and become something else. So uh, dance is really uh, become such a like, well, listening to music and dancing, such a, a way of starting work in some ways. Like that is kind of, I get to studio and I play music and that allows me to let go. Um, uh, so yes, uh, this one I think is Alabama. And uh, the characters are still there, but they're from the first one that we saw after grad school, there is, um, I see them just much more clearly what I'm trying to what I'm trying to find within these pieces. The the characters are there, they're confident. Uh, they are they are ready to be viewed, but at their own terms. And uh, also as part of this exhibition. Um, something that came together. And, and that's what I like is that really the work is influenced continuously but by context, by what's going on. And everything is a result of everything that came before, right? And I feel like an art practice is like a person uh, with the, it's, uh, you know, I'm not who I am now be without being all the, you know, without being a teenager, without being, you know, in my twenties. And so uh, without any of those experiences, I couldn't be what I am now. And so is the art practice, you know, without all of the works that happened before, it just, this wouldn't happen. Um, these sculptures, I feel there were two of them, part of the exhibition, uh, Snail Shell with Rachel Hayden. And um, they're, completely made out of clothes that I was keeping in my studio because I couldn't take them to a thrift store. And uh, I have a kid, as you, I mentioned, and she keeps growing. And so we keep having to get larger sizes of things. Um, anyways, these clothes, I couldn't get rid of them. I'm keeping them in my studio because I'm like, it's just fabric, right? And so this, sculptures are about her size she's 10 um and maybe a little bit smaller and uh they are stuffed they don't have any armature um there's no wire not none of that no support within it except if they're stuffed with more clothes so it's just clothes on clothes and then there are a little bit of course, some materials from my studio. And their titles is Babosa One and Babosa Two. Babosa means slug, but it's also this colloquial way in which um, you can be like, you know, when you're feeling like when you're like having this like absent minded kind of moment. And uh, my mom would be like, What are you doing? Babosa, you know? Um, so. It's really, it's, and it was a reaction of being like, what just happened? What, what, what's been happening? Like everything that has happened now. Um, and having this like, I just like being like shocked maybe, or too tired that you're just laying down on the floor. Um, both of them where I felt like this humorous, uh, useless guards of the exhibition they kind of creeped out people as they walked in because they were in corners and they really are child-like size. They are also being painted, spray painted. I use both, I think. Yeah, no, this just spray paint. And then baby Homer, um, you know, it's been a year of baby everything. I think we all were looking for comfort and for something that make us feel good. Baby Yoda was huge. There's still so much Baby Yoda everywhere and it's so cute, right? Um, so I, I 
made my own baby something and it was baby Homer, you know, iconic uh, pop culture uh, character that uh, really is goofy um, and clueless. And, and just to show, I think the vulnerability, the moment of vulnerability that we're all in. And it's like a, you know, reaching its arms up in the air as a, as a baby in need would um, exposed completely peeing on himself, um, asking for comfort and maybe for laughs. So that was the exhibition, A Snail Shell. And uh, then I took a big break too, to absorb everything that had happened, everything that I had made and um, I made a commission and then I'm now working again, starting again, I'm working on a new body of work. Uh, this piece, uh, this is my studio. It's on some tables and I haven't finished it yet, but this is getting really close. And I'm just showing you this because this is, I showed you a bunch of past, I show you some recent pieces and now we're like moving into the future, right? Uh, I haven't finished that. I'm thinking about using different materials uh, for the support in the back. I'm, um, some ideas are formulating, but they're not quite there. I'm like, there is plywood involved, some cutouts that come out of the, of the wood pole that hangs them in the back, but I'm not quite sure of the shapes yet. And, um, and then, yeah, there's probably gonna be a little bit more painting, right? So not done, but probably tomorrow that a lot of things will happen. And then I'm also excited about the piece after that because that's what happens. One piece just pushes the next one forward. Um, so that's all I got. Um, Thank you so much for listening to me for such a long time. <laughs> um, but yeah, how are we doing on time? I don't know. Oh, we're doing great. It is, um, well, I guess it's 1240 um, Philly time. <laughs> so um, thank you so much, uh, Maria. That was amazing. I, uh, I, no. A lot of that's going to stick with me. I love the like satisfying all the different parts of yourself. That really resonates with me. and. Uh, Hope Thank you. you. Um, so uh, we'll now be taking questions from the audience. So if you could um, type out your questions in the chat and my co-host Lily Brown is going to read them for Maria to respond. And Should I stop sharing? Um, uh, or you could leave it up. Maybe some, you might want to reference back. So, okay. Um, yeah, take it away, Lily. <laughs> Hi, Maria. Um, thank you so much. Uh, that was so awesome. There are so many questions from when I was just viewing your work on Instagram. That was like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, thank you. So, yeah, there's a couple um, questions that kind of intertwine with each other, kind of just about the fabrics. Um, so I'm going to kind of mush together uh, a question I had with some other questions about the fabric pieces that you're working with. Um, this one's from Sally and she says, are the pieces sewn or do you only use reusable webbing or glue? Also, do you use fabric spray paint or actual spray paint? Because I found that the spray paint can deteriorate the fabric. And also um, when it comes to the fabric, I, I'm not sure if you covered this, um, how are you finding these fabrics? How much are you altering them before you use them? And I was also curious about like the, does the thickness of the fabric, fabric matter? Like, are you like taking it into consideration maybe when you're you doing a certain piece, do you want all the fabric to be the same thickness? Does that matter? So I was just hoping you could dig a little bit into those decisions. Yes, those are all great questions. That's a lot, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try to remember all of them. Uh, <laughs> I can help. <laughs> uh, so, okay, I, I have 
I have a, my own collection that I've been building for a bit of fabric. Like I've done things like uh, going to LA to the fabric district and buy a bunch of fabric. And then I'm like, some things are not ready to be used. And so I've kept fabric for years sometimes. And all of a sudden I'm like, yes, now it's time for that banana fabric, you know? <laughs> Uh, but uh, I also, I buy from thrift stores, from um, stores that have re reusable materials. So um, creative reuse in San Francisco. And there was another one here in Oakland that I think just closed, but, um, and also discount fabric stores around um, the Bay. Um, so yeah, I buy new fabrics and then I also have my own stash that I keep, keeps getting bigger. Um, and sometimes clothing, like now I was just talking about at the end, um, clothing that I was gonna get rid of end up being part of a lot of pieces. Um, now, in terms of how do I buy my fabrics? Okay, this is something that I sew things. I used to glue them really at the beginning uh, in undergrad, like so 2004 um because i didn't know how to sew but i've learned to sew uh, my own way and that's mainly a lot about what i was trying to um to talk about and touch on is that i found the way it worked for me right so at the beginning there were certain fabrics that i would avoid completely uh things that were too stretchy things that were like lame, even though it looks beautiful and shiny. I was like, it's so hard to work with. It kind of, you get runs, it like splits if, you know, it's just not easy to work with, right? Um, so I, I switched to buying things that kind of felt not stretchy, just touching them and being like, okay, you know. Um, but, Saying that, I've broken that rule too for myself many times. I've been like, I'm just gonna buy this shiny lame thing and I'm gonna try to use it and I don't care that it's gonna split apart, right? So it really is up to what you're looking for. And I feel like it's trial and error. Just try and try and try until you find the things that work for your specific work. Um, and the exciting part, I think, and something that maybe I didn't mention is that there's a ton of failure. There's a ton of like, that didn't work. That looks horrible. That, uh, and even with the painting itself too, like I have sewn a whole sculpture by hand and then I go and spray paint it. And I'm like, oh no, you know, it's just awful. Um, but then that's the most exciting part the moment that you're like, okay, I completely ruined that piece. So instead of throwing it away, I'm going to give it another go. And, you know, I'm going to throw it away anyway, so I don't care. And then you work on it. And then sometimes it just becomes something new and exciting that you didn't know you could do. And that opens a whole new body of work. Um, so, uh, I use spray paint, I use latex paint, and I look, I use acrylic paint. Um, I found the ways that, um, sometimes spray paint does ruin some fabrics. I have really old pieces now that look exactly the same. Um, so it really is, uh, try out what you're looking for and and also what is ruining the fabric right um that is the question too um do you want it to be soft and exactly the same as it was when you bought it um yeah that might not happen uh some some fabric gets hard and almost plastic like um but i like that texture so i'm keeping it right uh if you spray from really far you'll um spread the paint a little bit more and so you can keep more of that softness um i don't know with uh, other paints you can also water them down a lot so that they don't make the fabric as rigid 
uh, again, if, if you're not looking for that. Um, I have used some fabric paint, but I'm not, you know, I'll use it, but also use complete other things. Um, I want it to be permanent, so I don't use water-based really. Uh, and then there was something else, hold on. Oh, do I do something to the fabrics before I use them? Um, sometimes I piece fabrics together. Like if I want a really large piece, I sew a bunch of fabric together. I, I usually, the painting happens at the end. So it doesn't happen, but I have made a piece where I painted first because I used a ready-made blanket. And so then I added, I painted first and then I added the fabric. I did the reverse of my process, which was fun to do too. Um, so does that answer the questions? Yes, I'm, so I'm, I'm still a, a trainer as well. So I should probably learn how to piece together the questions so they're not so grandiose, but that you, you nailed it. So oh. good job. <laughs> great job. No, um, we're all related, so it made sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, here's another. In some of your earlier images, it looks like you've painted the wall and made your own pedestals, like the wavy one that you showed us. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if doing this and by making large rugs to place sculptures on, et cetera, you're trying to create a new context for your work within the spaces they're in. Do you see these as, do you see these as parts of the work? Um, just love you to expand on, I guess, the, the atmosphere, if you're trying to create like an atmosphere for the piece that you're displaying with other pieces almost. Yeah, that's, that's a great observation. And I think, yes, it is something that I'm thinking about and uh, I think it's still developing too. Um, but like even the presentation, if you noticed, I added color around the images um, because I feel like I have a bit of trouble with just white, right? It's just, I am a color person and uh, I feel like that is part of, my personality, part of, of my, probably my history. And, and so I want to bring that in, right? That color, texture. Um, so it's in the installation at John McNeil, I was able to have these large um, uh, shapes that were painted and it was adding then a different uh, texture, right? Because the wall is one of the materials for the, for the piece. And I've done that also with one of the earlier pieces in the presentation, Un Limon Medio Bonbon. I also painted a, a space, and I, I do that actually several times, I think, a space within uh, the artwork where the artwork can live. So this is one example. Um, and it's a way of anchoring the, the work this one in the background too uh, uh, has a blue shape. I think it also I felt probably it was more necessary for these pieces. And I think there's a big difference that is happening now is um, the works that I'm making recently have a kind of a, are living within a fabric frame already. While these pieces were more shaped, were more, um, like the figure is floating alone in space. So the figure is made out of fabric, but, um, but there's not really a context for it. So, you know, um, with the more recent works, there's less of that because they live within a space. Awesome, thank you. Um, also, when it comes to the work, the mostly figural work that you're using, I guess this goes both for the two-dimensional and three-dimensional pieces. Um, are you working from reference material or are you like photos of people, models, or are these, all these um, images and people, are they coming straight from your brain? 
Um, so I think it, I'm influenced by the things that I see all the time, right? And I think there, there is a collection of memories of, of people and how they move and um, that, I, that I just store. Um, but, but I don't work from photographs or images, um, like real images. They're all in my head, I guess. Um, but it's more like a narrative sometimes that just pops into my head, like uh, that it's like, I wanna capture that. I wanna capture that, that moment, that personality that, and, and so then I imagine the bodies um, and how they would move through space. Um, I mean, I've looked at my hands every now and then but <laughs> that's about it. Well, that, I, especially this one, I love so much. Um, I think we are kind of nearing the end. I have a couple more. Um, Christy, how are we doing on time? We're doing fine, right? Yeah, we've got about five more minutes. So. Five more minutes? Okay. Um, so another question that I was seeing uh, for scale, specifically your quarantine drawings, what sizes were those just like in comparison to the other drawings that you've done in the past? Uh, 18 by 24, okay. yeah. Um, yeah, I like, I like having space. I've done smaller drawings too, but um, especially with that kind of gestural um, way of drawing, it's nice to have a little bit of room. Perfect. Okay, let's see. Nearing the end. Here's um, one last one. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've noticed that you use a wavy pattern or use wavy edges a lot. Is this significant hinting at some deeper conceptual concept involving waves or irregularity? Um, so yes, I think form is very important and, and shape. Uh, there, are, there, there are elements that I think are uh, attractive and there's, they have its own, um, I think they're reminiscent they are reminiscent of the body itself and the, the curves that happen in, in a body. Um, I think they talk about uh, femininity, uh, sensuality. Um, so that's why the, the curviness and the softness uh, that happens. Awesome. Um, I have just, I have one more personal question. If anyone, we have about five minutes left. If anyone has any last minute um, quick questions, please drop them in the chat box. Um, I personally was wondering, do any of these work? Like, could you take them and like lie them on your bed or are these all specifically meant to be hung on the wall? I just, I love them so much. And I was just curious about like, are they like really stiff? I guess some of them are, I guess it probably depends on the materials you're using. Yeah, um, and then like, okay, so for the wall hangings, what I call wall hangings, most of them are meant to just hang in the wall. Um, and uh, they're, they're still soft though. Like I've, I've rolled them um, to ship them or um, they, they still have a softness to them. Uh, they could be sometimes when I when I get down with one I kind of drape it over me and wear it a little bit I don't know <laughs> just like it's fun um, which makes me think about clothes again and I'm like oh maybe I should make also clothes uh, but uh, but yeah no I've never put them I've been thinking that I want to make a quilt for myself right like for my bad again looking into the domestic space <laughs> but uh but I don't have that much time it's like really like I have to choose my battles in some way of everything that I can that I can make um because uh things like this craft in general and, and I have a, a practice that is based on craft and is uh takes time it's a lot of a lot of labor <laughs> 
All right. Well, I think that concludes the um, questions. Thank you so much. I'm a huge fan girl. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and thank you I guess, for having me. Oh, thank you. And um, Christy, I guess I will pass it off to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That was, that was so wonderful. I love, I love these lecture days. <laughs> um, so thanks everyone for attending this week's Visiting Artist Program lecture with Maria Guzman Comprón. Uh, we hope you enjoyed today's lecture and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you and see you in a little bit.